It's been a long time coming, but a kitchen can actually be smart and it's not that difficult to do. And today I'm gonna to show you a number of devices and a number of simple automations that I've set up to smarten up my kitchen. Kitchens need to be well lit and I don't have to touch my light switch ever. I get notified when my cooking is complete and I can even make a cup of tea without being in my kitchen. I don't have to think about feeding my pets, and in some cases my children. And all of this is easy, not complicated to set up or complicated to live with. And my first and probably my favorite smart gadget is really indicative of that. Now, being a single parent and honestly not paying enough attention when my mom tried to teach me to cook as a kid, well, I've needed a little bit of help. I started with things like the Instapot and I even purchased an air fryer. These got me to a better place where I could make slightly better meals for my little guy. But nothing has changed my level of cooking like Drio's Chef Maker. This was a Kickstarter earlier in the year, but you can go buy it now. And I promise it will transform your kitchen. So much so that I don't really use that oven anymore. Not only is this an air fryer, so you can always do the classic air frying. You can set your temperature. You can change how long it's going for. You hit the play button a couple times and it'll start cooking. But it's more than that. You can see all these different functions on the device. Plus, there are a couple of modes that use some of the additional features on here that really take this to a whole other level. Now, you see right here is a water container. So you fill this up with water and when you enter into chef mode, it's going to allow you to pick beef, pork. You can see there's all kinds of different things on there. I've never made salmon so good. I've never made burgers that are so good. And my son has even come out and told me that my burgers are better than ones we get at restaurants. He even told me they were better than the ones grandpa made him. And believe me when I say that, that's saying a lot. You could do everything from beef, chicken, pork, fish, shellfish, and vegetables. And I'm sure this list will grow because this gets firmware updates through the Drio app. And you can see, they want you to put in the probe and they have a probe for this that you put in to whatever you're cooking. And then they'll say, okay, do you want it medium, medium well, or well done? You select what you wanna do. They say, okay, make sure the probe's in there. And then they manage the humidity level in there with that little water container. And it makes all the automated decisions for cooking. And like I said, my kid absolutely loves what we're getting out of Drio Chef Maker, and I love that I can get this healthy food into them. But it's not just smart from this navigation and this app standpoint. The physical construction of this thing is very smart, and now I've been using it for a number of months, so I can talk about some of the reliability and some of that construction. This is the first true non-stick surface that I've had in my household, because everything else has pretended it was non-stick. I don't ever have to scrape and I've never had to therefore scrape off the non-stick coating. It all stays very clean and my only concern has been that I didn't have somewhere to place the temperature probe. But this one sends me a notification whenever cooking is done and then I can return and serve it up quickly and efficiently to a hungry kid who's happy to eat healthier things. I rarely use that big oven as I said and that has all kinds of benefits to me. So it's stuff like this that I'm gonna show you has turned my boring kitchen into one that's finally what I'd call smart. Every smart kitchen is going to need a robot vacuum. They're gonna keep your floors clean, but one thing you wanna make sure is that your robot vacuum comes with a mop. The reason I say that is they can do both jobs at once. And actually I've loaded the detergent into this device. It's gonna handle that entire process. The only thing that I have to do as an owner is to make sure that this base stays clean every once in a while, kind of wiping out the inside. And number two, filling up that detergent and emptying the dirty water every so often. 
This is so easy to set to just run as you leave your home. And I think that's one of the most important things that you can do with a robot vacuum. You leave, everyone in your house is out and you let that run because you don't want it disturbing you as you go about your day. Now this little guy over here, this is a really interesting pairing and it's something that I think a lot of pet owners are gonna love the idea of. But first I have to introduce you to a friend of mine. Now, this is my pet beagle, Gidget. And honestly, she's the most wonderful dog on the planet. Or at least I get to say that, oh thank you. Now this dog likes to eat, and I think most beagles do. But most of the automated pet feeders available on the market now, they're not smart enough, they clog up, they're kind of problematic devices. And in the past, you know, Gidget's gained a little bit of weight. So I've wanted to modify how much she's eating. So what I'm using is called the Akara C1 pet feeder. And you connect this to a hub from Akara and then it can manage all of your pet's feeding needs. So not only can you adjust when and how much food they get at every feeding, you can do that on the fly and you get to record your very own greeting to your dog. Now the dog runs over as soon as she hears the thing dispensing food, as soon as she hears my voice. And one little interesting option is to combine that with what is called the G3 camera from Akara. Now that's a pan tilt camera, so it'll fly around and you can automate it to turn towards the food bowl as your dog is being fed. You can two-way communicate through it and you can chat with your dog if you're away. And then you can get a recording. So this combination, it gives you this connection a little bit with your pet even when you're away and they hear your voice every time they're being fed. So with the smart features combined with what is a very good pet feeder, Gigi and I are pretty happy in our kitchen with her food. Not everything needs to be connected in order to be smart. And I'm incredibly terrible at keeping plants alive. Even when I've used things like soil humidity sensors, I somehow kill plants. One thing I hate buying are dried spices. In fact, I hated this so much that at one point I got a seriously connected smart garden system that had a monthly fee to it. The thing was overwhelming and it was really neat, but for more families, I think the Aero Garden is probably the smartest way to go. This has provided me an incredible amount of basil, oregano, chives, and just recently I had started some mint. And actually, I'm trying to start an orange tree. I kid you not. Now, the biggest problem you'll have with this is that the little red light comes on to tell you to add water or a cap full of their liquid food that you buy from Aero Garden. But it's not an expensive system. And although you can buy seeds and pods from Aero Garden directly, and you'll get some with your initial purchase, I've even purchased third party pods and seeds from wherever I would like and this thing just makes stuff grow. It works on a completely automated and self-contained program. And if you've never had one of these things, they are nearly perfect that way. Your biggest problem will be cleaning the lid every once in a while. And your second biggest problem will be finding people to give away all the extra herbs and spices to. Now I have to take a moment and thank our members. These people make it possible for me to continue to build content like this on Automate Your Life. My mom made orange pico and Earl Grey tea all the time. So as a kid, I grew up drinking that. And to this day, I'll keep a few tea bags around just to kind of hark it back. But I think we all know that your kettle makes a big difference when it comes to how good your tea comes out. And even how often you'll make it. I hated my previous kettle and I would find ways to not use it. Now this smart kettle from Gobi has a couple of physical reasons for being really smart. One mistake I think they made is that the kettle does get extremely hot on the outside. So I don't necessarily recommend this around kids, but for adults, 
this is pretty much the perfect kettle. It can heat up a lot of water very fast, but it's not too big and it's not difficult to pour. In fact, the gooseneck makes this water come out perfectly, plus it has a number of built-in temperatures based on the type of drink you're making. And it has a keep warm function that will keep your water at that temperature for up to two hours. And its smarter features make this an amazing pairing with other things that you do in your home. For me, I change over to the coffee mode, which I can do every evening at a certain time through the scheduling in their app. Then I can turn on the smart kettle when I get out of bed. And by the time I'm downstairs, I have water ready for my Nespresso coffee maker. Now, if you know those, they are making just a small amount of coffee and you usually have to backfill with water or milk. So this works works out timing wise and I'm not waiting for the water to boil. So I just started this up. It's going to make me my coffee. It's pretty exciting for me by the way. But this is just done and this is how I come down every morning and I just add my little bit of water and you can see that's like a perfect pour out of there. But for those of you that are parents, you know, there's something extra with this. And what I mean by that is there are a number of modes here. There's a DIY mode, okay? And that allows you to set custom temperatures on that kettle. Those custom temperatures let you do things like warming baby bottles. And with that hold temperature for two hours or up to two hours, you can get things ready and bring them out whenever you need them. Now, those are some of the appliances that I found a lot of worth in, and I've tried out a number of them. So these are the ones I wanted to tell you about, but we have to work within this space. And even if we have Chef Maker, we gotta cook some things. Now the first thing we need is bright lighting because you gotta see what you're cooking. Now, you need it to be customizable too, so there's a couple of things I've done. The first thing is back here, and it's tucked under my cupboard. This is a present sensor, it was $20. It connects to Samsung SmartThings. It knows when you're in the space and you don't have to keep moving. So even if you're just sitting there cutting veggies, you're gonna be just fine and it's configurable in a number of ways that let it work for your kitchen. Not only can you change like how far it looks out into your kitchen, not only can you change things like how long the delay is before it turns off or on the lights, but in general, it's just gonna be configurable to your lifestyle. Now you can set up multiple of those to cover your kitchen if you've got a fairly large one, but honestly, it's just one for me in my home. But I'm using two kinds of lighting here in my kitchen. Now the lighting that I'm turning on, okay? So right here, this is from a company called Wiz, and over here, that's from a company called Philips Hue. I'm using both of those just to demonstrate. You probably wanna pick just one for your home. But Wiz can actually do that presence detection if you have multiple of these bulbs in your space. I find it a little slower, but these bulbs can be set up to do presence detection so when you walk in, they turn on. But both of these companies have a really great feature that's important for your family, actually how you sleep every night. Now, this bulb is not doing it, okay? You'll notice it's kind of a different color white than this one. The reason for that is what's called circadian rhythm. Now, if you don't know what a circadian rhythm is, it's basically your sleep pattern. And if you turn on circadian rhythm with smart lighting like those, then what's going to happen is they are going to adjust as the day goes. So they'll kind of start with this yellower light during the morning, and then they will transition to that in the middle of the day. Then they'll kind of head back to that as you get into the evenings. Now, why is that so useful is because then you're not getting all of that blue light from the lighting in your home. So this is a feature that I just turn on. So whenever these bulbs turn on, they are going to be at the right color temperature for the right time of day. And that's gonna support my sleeping patterns at night. This is something that I think all of us should be buying right now, because if you just buy a single color temperature bulb, then you might be messing with your own sleep pattern. Now there's a pretty big problem when we talk about putting smart bulbs into your home, and you're gonna run into this right away. 
but it's not hard to get around. The problem with smart bulbs is that as soon as you turn off a light switch, well, then you're turning off the power to those smart bulbs and they can no longer do those fancy automations. They can no longer turn on period, just like your regular lights. Now, the other problem that I ran into personally is that whoever designed this place decided I didn't need a light switch in the kitchen. So what's that thing doing here, right? Well, this is a wireless and a battery powered light switch. I can take it wherever I want to go, but you see, I got a nice wall plate. I just stuck it right here on my kitchen tile. Now, it just snaps in there. It's got a magnetic backing and I've just stuck it on the wall with a little bit of tape. So there's nothing fancy going on here. There's nothing permanent here. I can peel this off anytime I'd like. Now again, this connects to my Samsung SmartThings hub, but there's a number of versions of this kind of product available on the market today. And the other thing that's so great with these is I don't just have to set one color or one brightness or one scene in this switch. I can double tap, I can single tap, I can hold those buttons. There's actually a lot of different functions in these types of controllers. And I will tell you with this one, this is spouse approved. Even if they don't like your automation, your home automation, your tinkering with things, this one is spouse approved every time because you give them that control wherever they want it. It's convenient and it's customizable for them. It can be as simple as an on off to turn on and off your lighting, or it can be more complex and do multiple things like I've set it up to do. I was chatting with a friend recently and they told me that their dishwasher actually leaked on them and this ruined a bunch of tiles on their floor and then the tiles didn't exist and insurance company took forever and it was like half a year before they got their place back and they had to replace everything and they had to pay for parts of that. Very painful experience. Now, there's something I've done here in my home because I think water leaks and protection of that kind of thing is really important. Now, what I've done to protect myself from this is kind of two different actions. Number one, I've placed a leak sensor under my major sources. So the sink right here, the dishwasher and fridge. Now, for me, the fridge isn't such a big thing, but if you've got that water tap in there, yeah, that can be a big deal. Then the second piece of that is I bought this thing called the Zoos Titan. Now this goes over the valve in your basement, your home's main water valve. And again, all of this connects to a smart home hub, in my case, Samsung SmartThings. Now, as soon as any of those sensors detect water on them, it closes that valve in my basement. It closes my home's main water valve. So there's only at that point so much water that can come out. Plus I'm getting a notification. I can turn on lighting. I could do all kinds of things. And for myself, I just turn on some lighting in the bedroom to a red color. So it tells me that something bad has gone on in my home. I need to get up and check that. So I'm not going to have that kind of a situation here. You can protect yourself really easily too. Now this isn't in my kitchen, but it's a requirement for kitchens because you won't believe how much stuff goes into the air when you're cooking. So let me show you something I've done. This is Amazon's air quality monitor. It's a simple setup device. You set it up in their Miss A application, and then it measures six different uh, indices for air quality in your home. Now there's a lot of different models you could buy, but when combined with something like this air purifier, this one's from a company called Drio, but there's a lot of different models you could get. But just combining these two items right here cleans up that air quality in your home. So although this one is all the way in my living room, you might have a place for it somewhere in your kitchen. This is a really important automation to have because this just cleans up all of those particulates that cooking 
spits out. Now there are some other automations and some other products hiding. You can see that light strip up there. And uh, you know, that's providing us a number of different notifications about things going on around our home. And it's also providing some pretty nice ambient lighting. But I created a whole separate video that will give you more ideas for automations you can do in your kitchen. Actually, there's some really interesting things with detecting water running, as well as customized counters that you can put in your own home with things like LED strips, just like that one. So check that video out, it's up on screen right there. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, and of course, don't hate, automate.